Welcome to my third video lecture off of my PowerPoint for Module 5. We're continuing our discussion. We've talked about constructing a confidence interval for the mean of a population, one population sigma known, which you use the z values in the formula. We talked about constructing a confidence interval for a mean of a population when sigma is unknown, which means you use s in the formula to estimate the mean. We're now going to look at the confidence interval for the difference of two means. Now we're going to look at two population confidence interval calculations for the means. So instead of mu, you have the difference of two mu's. And this is usually used when you're doing comparative studies between two populations. I've given you an example before on Delta Airline and United Airline pilots. And let's say you're interested in comparing their average salaries. This is the formula you'd use to, or you want to compare the average, the GPA, average GPA of LACC students versus Pasadena or Santa Monica students. Again, you're dealing with two populations and you want to know if the average GPAs are the same, one is larger than the other, or what the relationship is. It's called comparative studies, which means we're doing looking at the difference between two populations. That's when you use this formula. And there is the good old saying, uh, it's, it's, it's just double the, double the variables, more, more fun. So it's just, it's, it's the same thing. If, if you wrote the formula for one mean, you'd notice how similar it is. It's X bar minus Z. Remember, sigma over square root of N, X bar plus Z sigma over square root of N. It's pretty much the same. Instead of X bar, now you have X1 bar minus X2 bar. Z is just Z. Instead of one sigma, you have two sigmas because you have two populations. Instead of N, you have two Ns. So it's really just double, double the number of variables. It makes no difference since we're going to be doing this with, uh, with, with Excel anyways to figure out the lower confidence limit and the upper confidence limit. Everything else is pretty same. Excel command to find the z-score is the same. And the values are going to be either given to you, which means you'll just straight up plug it in. Or I'll give you two sets of numbers in which you'll have to find the you know, x1 bar, x2 bar, s1, s, I mean sigma1, sigma2 all yourself. So let's actually look at an example. I have an example here for you. Uh, we're looking at two populations here. And every time you're looking for uh, two populations, you always want to write down the given statistics so that you won't get mixed up when you're trying to plug them into the formula. And a lot of students say, well, which one do we write first? Well, just read whatever they talk about first. You let that be the first set of data value. So the mean height of 50 male students who showed interest in participating in college athletics so showing interest will be the first set of numbers you write. It's very simple. Whatever comes first, you write it first. So students that show interest in athletics have an average of 68.2, right there, and a uh, population, meaning it's sigma, a standard deviation of 2.5, sample size is 50. The second population, again, 50 male students. Uh, their sample is, the sample mean is... 67.5 and again the population standard deviation is 2.8 and they're asking us to and the confidence level here is 90 percent now if you memorize this would be 1.645 but you could always find it using the command and remember the command you take the 90 percent you divide it by two and then you add 0.5 to it and you use that number into norm dot s dot inverse of 0.95 and that will give you that so <clears throat> so let's um trying to do this uh, if i just straight up do it and write it out uh, and let me go ahead and actually calculate the uh, z score for you guys one more time i don't think it hurts if you see it done on a spreadsheet once again to see how 1.645 is achieved remember the confidence level is 90 percent so if i go to my spreadsheet clean this up okay so you get norm dot s dot inverse 0.95 right 0.95 1.645 so you could you could get that also using a spreadsheet and there's the command all right the z score is 1.645 now you just plug it in. So x1 bar minus x2 bar minus the z times, I'm just gonna write it. You don't need to worry about this because as I've said many times, you guys are gonna be given the formula sheet during, you can use it during the test. So you don't have to memorize any of these formulas. You're welcome. 
And it basically, again, I mean, this whole chapter is the same thing. I mean, once you get a feel for what's going on, then it's just plugging in numbers. That's all it is. So X1 bar is 68.2 minus uh, 67.5 minus 1.645 times the square root of um, 2.5 squared over 50 plus 2.8 squared over 50 mu1 minus mu2. And I'm not going to bother writing this side because it'll be the same thing with a plus in between. And I've done it here so you guys could see it uh, clearly. So there are my, there's my input values, data values. Here's my z-score. Here's my formula. I plug it in. I even showed you how to find the left-hand side and right-hand side, literally typing the numbers. Even You see, here you could type the numbers because there are no repeating decimals and stuff, so it's not a question of, oh my God, there's like 500 decimal places, what am I going to do? For numbers that have a lot of decimal places and you're actually calculating stuff yourself in terms of the mean, it's a good idea to just type it on Excel and click on it. But if the numbers are all one or two decimal places, then it's okay to actually write the actual values. You won't get that much off of an answer. And there it is. If you operate and execute the left-hand side, right-hand side, that's what you get for the two sides, for the lower confidence limit and for the upper confidence limit. And usually this will come on the test with two boxes in which you will have to fill up. So it'll be a box here. It will say mu1 minus mu2, and it'll be a box there. You just fill in the numbers here. That's all. And don't forget the zero before the decimal. So that'll be the answer for that. So that's how you construct the confidence interval for the difference of two means when population standard deviations are given. Thank you.